Blessed Good Friday, everybody. And Tony here. And what a better day to review Wagner's Parsifal, which was shown at the Budapest State Opera House, than this. The conductor was by Hyuha Yurai. The production was done by Andras Miko. The choreographers were Peter Laszlo and Laszlo Sergei. The set design was done by Gabor Forai. The costumes were done by Peter Makai and the chorus master was Kalman Strauss. Now before I open this review of this particular production of Parsifal, Waltraud Meyer has sung her final Kundries at the Staatsoper im Theater back in Berlin. It's rather sad to see and hear that she is going to say farewell to her signature Wagner role, but I could definitely tell that she had loads of fun with this particular character as this not only brought her a lot of fame and fortune thanks to this wonderful and very fascinating character in particular, but I could really tell that the loads of introspection, the loads of time that she took with this character in terms of really understanding her, in terms of really making her a very human character, I could tell that she definitely enjoyed every single moment of what Kundri has to offer. And not to mention, I have heard a couple of her Kundris online on YouTube, and I was totally blown away with everything that she had to offer. Besides, Madame Meyer sang this role somewhere in the mid 80s until she managed to really have her fame skyrocket when she sang this role in Bayreuth in 1983. So to Madame Meyer, I will totally miss you as Kundri. You made a marvelous impression in this role, and I'm sure that you will have a lot of wonderful, wonderful endeavors in the near future, but your Kundri is the one that, according to a lot of us, your fans, that I'm sure that you've really owned this role for many, many years. And even though it's sad to see you say farewell to this role, I really have to say that the fun that we had watching you as this very fascinating character was just absolutely wonderful and a true blessing. With that said, let's get on to what I thought about this particular production, costumes, the singers, and the conducting. I really love this production of Parsifal as it managed to use the whole less is more mantra in a way that actually works. Even though there's not a huge amount of backdrops in the scenery, I have to say that the backdrops used actually put a purpose into this opera. They really do set the standards of the entire less is more mantra, and they do it very, very well. From the leaves of the forest in the first act to the chambers of the Holy Grail to Klingzor's palace, to the Garden of the Flower Maidens, and back to where we all started from in the third act as well. And even though I would have loved to have a lot more scenery in Klingzor's palace, like having it built with a lot of red walls and all of those wonderful peaks being used in his palace, I think having it in entirely black with red lighting being used and having his two henchmen below him, I thought worked rather well, since it's to also indicate that Klingzua is also a master of illusions. He can turn anything as bare as a desert into something grand like a palace, with the power of his skill and even that of the corrupted Holy Spear. I thought that this production in its entirety did very, very well in terms of the overall scenery and I felt like the costumes were very, very well done, especially that of Kundri's, which she looked absolutely fabulous in thanks to the singer who wore them, Evelyn Herlitzios, in which I'll be talking about her when I talk about the singers. So overall, I am not going to mince words here. I really love the production and the costumes. They make a great use of color using all of the different colors from the palette, and everyone just looked very wonderful in their given costumes. 
And now we get to the singers, starting off with our title hero, sung by Ispan Kovatsas. He I also saw three days ago singing Zygmunt from Die Valkyra. I thought that this role was better suited to his voice, as, as I said before, when I heard him sing Zygmunt from Die Valkyra, Monsieur Kovatsazi has a very bright sounding, brilliant, and very wonderful spinto tenor voice in which he loves to use to his advantage. And I thought that with having him as Parsifal, he was able to fulfill all the requirements very, very well. First of all, I really love the youthfulness that he gives to this character, since I always love it when a youthful sounding held in tenua or spinto tenua sings this role very, very well. And he really did a fantastic job singing the role of the Holy Fool. His acting was also very well done, being very careful not to go over the top or not be so wooden at all. So I thought that overall, Istvan Kovatshazi's portrayal of the title hero, Parsifal, was very well done, both vocally and dramatically. And then we have Kundri, sung by Evelyn Herlitsius, who I also saw her in this particular role two years ago back at the Deutsche Oper Berlin. What more can I say about Madame Herlitsius? She is a very fabulous singing actress, and she really knows how to manipulate her Wagnerian soprano voice to her advantage, especially with one of her other signature roles. It's no surprise that Madame Herlitius has been very well known in the likes of Isolde, Brunhilde, Elektra, The Dyer's Wife, The Wozzeck Marie, and of course, Venus and Kundri, and even Ortrud as well. She sang her role very, very well, and her transitions to the low notes I thought were very well done, even though I would have loved to have a more Metsui voice, like let's say Rita Gore, or Gisela Schröter, Irene Dalis, Josephine Vesey, or even the great Waltraub Meyer singing this role. But for what Madame Herlitsius had to offer in this role, I totally bought it. Vocally, she still managed to portray her character with such fine vocal acting. And in terms of her overall theatricality, she was very athletic on stage. She was a stage animal. She crawled on her fours. She was very athletic. She was physical in this role giving such a fine rawness that she has been very well known for and really, really owning this character and really singing and acting the hell out of this role to her advantage. So, I'm not gonna wince words here. Madame Helizios, kudos to you for continuing to singing this very, very fine and very fascinating Wagner heroine. And then we have the wonderful role of Amfortas, sung by the wonderful Helden Baritone Gerd Krohovsky, who I've heard of a lot of times, especially on YouTube, and he seems to specialize in a lot of the Helden Baritone and bass baritone roles of that of Telramund, Pizarro, Hans Zachs, and of course, that coveted bass baritone role Wotan from the Ring Tetralogy. I thought he did very, very fabulously in this role. He is a very fine actor who really, really shows the pain and the suffering of Amfortas, of what he has to go through. He has a very, very fine voice, and he has a very fine held in body tone voice in which he loves to use to his advantage with very fine, very strong, robust tones and he has a very, very fine stage presence. Of course, I would have loved to have a body tone who specializes in a little bit of, of Lira, like a voice like Dietrich Fischer Dieskaus or Ben Baikul's voice to fit this particular character. But I thought with Gerd Grochowski, I thought that his robust and very stentorian sound suited the character very well, and his stage presence and acting was just very fine all around, making Amfortas a very sorrowful, yet a very noble person, all thanks to that very wonderful, robust timbre to his voice. We have the role of Klingzor, sung by Sandor Egri, 
As I've read in his biography, he seems to specialize in a lot of the dramatic baritone, head and body tone, and bass baritone roles of that of Scarpia, the Wotan from the Ring Tetralogy, and Pizarro from Fidelio, just to name a few roles that he's done in his repertoire. Oh, and he also sang the Grand Inquisitor from Verdi's Don Carlo, which is a basso profondo role. How cool is that? With hearing him as Klingzor, I thought he had a fine voice, but it seemed as though that his voice has shown signs of aging and shown signs of tiredness, which is no surprise because he's been singing a very demanding repertoire for many, many years. And it does show that his voice has been taken toll for singing these type of roles for several years. But other than that, I really love his stage presence. It's very menacing. It's so thrilling. It's so enthralling. It has that charisma that he brings into the stage and he doesn't go too over the top with it. Yes, I could have loved to have a lot more bite and a lot more howling and spitting with this role, such as the, having the likes of Ekahad Vlashiha or Gunther von Kannen or many, many other great Klingzors of the past. But I thought that with Maestro Egri, I thought he was able to give such a very solid and very wonderful portrayal of this extremely thankless Wagner villain. He was able to give such a very fine stage presence and with his glowering glances and that costume that he wore, he looked appropriately demonic and I could tell that this guy had such a blast with this role. Singing the role of Titorel, we have Istvan Kovats, who I also saw last night singing the role of Jesus from Nazareth from Johann Sebastian Bach's Johannes Passion. He has a very fine voice. He has a very wonderful timbre, which he loves to use his basso cantante to his voice to his advantage. However, it's not a voice that's totally suitable for Titorel. Every time I think about Titorel, I would usually want a basso profondo voice, which is darker, rounder, richer, and very, very, very cavernous, a la the likes of Giulio Neri, or Kurt Böhm, Gottlob Frick, Marti Talvela, or Mati Zalmanen, and even Ludwig Weber. Any basso profondo who has sung the likes of Osmin, Commendatore, Sarastro, the Grand Inquisitor, Sparafucile, and even the role of Marcel from Les Huguenots. I thought that with having Istvan Kovac singing this role, he was really good, but I would have wanted to have a beefier sounding basso profondo voice. But as he is, I thought he had a lot of authority. I thought he was able to have a lot of a sort of regal demanding stage presence that he puts into this character and I thought he did very well for this very very thankless role. Then we have Gunamans who actually sings a lot in this opera sung by Gabor Bretz. He is a very fine basso cantante and I really really love the timbre of his voice. This gentleman specialized in the likes of Mozart's Don Giovanni and many many other roles designed for a basso cantante like him. He was excellent as Gornamans, giving off such a fine timbre to his voice, and he has a very down-to-earth and very noble stage presence, which I totally dig in any Gornamans. Then we get to the smaller roles of the Knights of the Grail, sung by Petakis and Laios Geiger, both of them having very fine voices, with Peter Kiss's fine, light lyric tenor voice combined with Laios Geiger's fine bass baritone voice. I thought these two managed to play the roles very well. Then we have the four squires sung by Erika Markovic, Kristina Simon, Istvan Horvat, and Janos Sherekovan. These Fine singers did very, very well. 
All thanks to Erika Markovic's fine light lyric soprano voice, Christina Simon's lovely lyric mezzo voice, and of course, Isvan Horvats and Janos Sherkovan's fine light lyric tenor voices blending well with such fine colors and fine timbres. And then we have the wonderful roles of the Six Flower Maidens, sung by Sita Varadi, who has a very, very fine, lovely light lyric soprano voice. Ildiko Shakach with her fine, full sounding coloratura soprano voice. Cristina Simon, again, with her fine, lovely lyric mezzo voice. Gabi Gal with her fine, wonderful mezzo soprano voice. Esta Virdo with her fine soprano voice, which she loves to manipulate very, very well. And Eva Farheli with her wonderful, luscious, lyric mezzo voice. These ladies, when it comes to their singing, they blended very, very well, and they gave off such a very fine ensemble. Then we have the extremely, extremely small role of the heavenly voice sung by Atala Shuk, who I also saw last night as the mezzo-soprano soloist in the Johannes Passion by Bach. She has a very fine voice, and she really made the best of this extremely thankless part. So overall, I am not going to mince words about the singing, but it's very, very, very well done. And everyone did very fabulously. I really loved how they contributed their efforts and all of their artistry to their respective roles. And the conducting done by Vaihuha Yurai was excellent. Heck, even the audience seemed to give him the hugest round of applause every time he was on stage. And I absolutely agree. His tempi were very, very solid. He really knew what to do with the score of Wagner in particular, and he was able to use it well to his advantage. So overall, is there any other day better than Good Friday to watch something like Wagner's Pasifal? Certainly not. And this day was absolutely the best day to watch something as thought-provoking, thrilling, enlightening, and just wonderful as Wagner's final opera. Well, that's all for now. Before I wrap up this review, I'd also like to give a birthday shout out to two very wonderful people, Claude Evangelista and his older brother, Butch Evangelista. So I know that I've practically greeted you guys on Facebook and Twitter respectively, but I hope you all have a very, very happy birthday. And with Claude, it was a huge pleasure getting to know you as a person. It's really wonderful working with someone like you, even though that we've only worked in very, very few projects. And I wish you all the best in what your future endeavors have to offer. And with Butch, even though we've never met personally, I'm glad to know that someone like you is a very cool and down-to-earth guy. And well, with that said, Butch, Claude, I hope you guys have a very blessed Good Friday, and an equally happy, happy birthday. I hope you guys celebrated both of your days very, very well. And here's more awesome things coming to you guys. And with that said, this is Antoni signing off and wishing you all a good night. And stay tuned for my review of Verdi's Il Trovatore, which will be shown at the Erkel Theater. Good night, everybody.